Yamite, this is Vamzi from Player's Narrative Eye. So most video games these days feel like huge open worlds with a ton of filler content, and on the other end of the spectrum there are games that are way too linear and restrictive. The remake of Resident Evil 2 does more with less than any other game that I've played this year. It builds an interconnected hub world through a metroidvania or point and click adventure style elements. It's a survival horror game that makes you think about movement and resource management. For example, Leon can't move and shoot at the same time. This means that you have to really consider the environment and how you position yourself during a fight. Each zombie can take up to more than a few bullets to the head and they can sneak up on you if you're not paying attention. Most scuffles can be intense and scary as you need to manage your inventory space to make room for items and bullets or risk surviving an encounter by the skin of your teeth. But it is a bit forgiving as you can store items in a box and save at typewriters around the police station, which aren't plentiful but common enough to fear not dying. Also, the menu doesn't pause like in The Last of Us that still keeps the tension alive during a fight. The remake does build tension and dread through its enemies and sound design, Zombies will crawl up towards you if you've dismembered them. Some of them will play dead and sneak up on you when you've turned your back. It gets overwhelming at times when you don't manage your ammo and take out enemies in a strategic way. New enemy types are introduced as you progress throughout the game. There's the Licker, which are these creepy humanoid monsters who can crawl up on walls and jump you when you're not looking. The recurring boss fight with this mutating monster named William Birkin some infected dogs who are in the parking garage section who can gang up on you. There's also a few ones outside the police station like zombie flight plants, that grow vines and a few others. Back in the station though, about halfway through the game you have an encounter with this guy, the tyrant, who chases you around the whole police station and can kill you if you get too close. He tracks you everywhere within the police station. This is a really good enemy design as it adds more tension to your exploration and combat because he's always lurking around the corner as you progress through the game. When you do finally kill him, it is quite cathartic, albeit a little bit cheesy. Most of this takes place in the interconnected museum turned police station that you explore at your own pace and discover optional rooms or items. This means that you have to backtrack to the places you've already been, so you can't really escape zombies by running past them as you probably need to come back to get a key item later. This fear is enhanced with its impressive sound design as zombies bang on doors, or break down bottled up windows, or the tyrant busting through a wall to grab you. The exploration is quite rewarding as you need to learn the level layout in your head and solve the puzzles by putting things together by yourself. Although you can find a map that gives you enough information as you explore to plan your routes or take a shortcut to unlock a secret door with unpicked items, or just a quick getaway from the tyrant. All of this makes the police station feel alive and lived in by showing you what went down before Leon's arrival. It is Leon's first day on the job after all, so he has as much knowledge about this station as you would about biochemical engineering. One of his first assignments is to unlock his own desk, which involves two combination locks and the initials of the first names of your co-workers. It's a simple yet effective puzzle to reward players with environmental storytelling in a high capacity magazine. Brain teasers and puzzles like these has you bouncing around the station as Leon uncovers the sinister plot of the Umbrella Corporation. The story is a bit cheesy and over the top, but still, rather enjoyable. Sorry. I think the game does a good job of making you feel weak with clunky controls and movement, even though you carry weapons like shotguns and hand grenades. But it's the interconnected level design and pacing which makes the game stand out from the rest of the survival horror games out there. Hopefully we'll see Capcom carry the same philosophy of game design in their future Resident Evil games. Hey, thanks for watching, subscribe to support my channel and like the video if you did. Cheers.